LPHM, MSRP, <laughs> MLOC, RAX, RACS, BR, MS. I am D-O-N-E with all these acronyms for gun parts. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple of different things and I want to start off with talking about some new products from Badger. So these were some things that I got to check out. Um, my buddy Tyler at Badger kind of showed me what was going on with these things at SHOT Show this year in January. I'm excited and I'm excited that I've got these things now to show you uh, because we did a little bit of coverage on these uh, within our SHOT Show coverage on ITS. but. Now I've got these in person, I can really explain the benefits of, of what Badger has created with this product. So they've created a product called the Low Profile Harris Mount. So if you've ever used a Harris bipod, which is pretty much the most common bipod out there if you're shooting precision rifle or anything like that, that's what I run on my gun. And first off, it took me a long time to realize what kind of bipod I needed. Um, I first started out on a different Harris model than this. This is the SH. BRM, BRMS <laughs> is, the, is the type of bipod this is. So basically what that means is it's got the extended legs and when you push the button, they shoot out like this. So they automatically go from six inches to nine inches just with the push of a button. And then you can kind of back them down like this and they've got detents so that you can get them to the same place on each of the legs. So I really like this system. But one thing that I have run into is deploying a, a bipod like this and shooting off a barricade. So meaning if I had this completely collapsed like this, I had the bipod down and I was shoving that bipod into a barricade to shoot off of, sometimes you can activate these buttons and these wind up flipping down and then you've got all this to deal with rather than a shorter leg. So what Badger did is not only did they fix that problem that I'm describing with the barricade, but they also fix the problem of kind of everything going on in this area. So as you can see, there's a lot going on in the, in the way that I have this configured, which is a, it's a QD auto lock from American Defense that I have on here so I can quickly remove the bipod. And then basically you still have the Harris bipod parts that are still on here. And I've installed a pod lock. That was a recommendation from Market Accurate Ordnance when I got this gun built. Both the QD auto lock as well as the pod lock were his recommendations for that. And I've really enjoyed both of those because I can, I can quickly adjust this and adjust the cant of the rifle um, with this pod lock in the back. So if you look at the system that Badger developed here, basically what you've got is, I'm going to try not to pinch myself. It's a little tip that I've learned with these two is that you can severely pinch yourself with these. I did that at the very first Mammoth Sniper Challenge I went to. First day, came in from the end of the event, it was nighttime, I couldn't see crap, and I went to basically fold down my bipod so that I could set my gun down, and I wound up getting my finger inside of that bipod, and it completely just butchered my finger. It was pretty much horrible the whole weekend. That was, you know, the first night of the three-day event, and just ridiculous. So now I'm like super careful anytime I mess with the legs on a Harris bipod, so trust me, don't learn the hard way, be careful around it. So. Anyway, it's got their own version in the back of this uh, with their own, I think this is their own pod, pod lock. So they worked with Harris basically on this design. So first off, they went to Harris and they said, hey, we've got this idea for a better design on this. Can we work with you to make some modifications to the popular, I have to write it down, BRMS is the name of this. I can never remember that on this model of Harris. So if you notice real quick, the buttons that I was talking about actuating when you're shoved into a barricade are now moved to the inside. So same buttons, just like that, but now they're on the inside. So when you press against a barricade, those buttons aren't susceptible to being hit now when you're moved up against the barricade. So that's, that's a great feature, first off. Second off, they, made, they took out a bunch of stuff. So let me take off this, this would be easier to Kind of discuss with you while I'm looking at this. All right, so if you can notice here between the Harris, see all this stuff right here that has to be, um, this is how it attaches to the QD basically. So they took all that stuff off, 
with their low profile mount because it wasn't necessary anymore. So what they did is, let me see if I can, I'll remove my QD here. Because the way that this QD attaches can, I'll show you a little more about how this works here. All right, so the QD is basically a, sl a sling swivel. So the way that the, the Harris works is that it's designed as it comes to attach to a sling swivel stud. That's not necessary with the system that Badger invented because they've replaced this almost entire assembly here that requires the sling stud and they've replaced it with their low profile mount. So if I were to take all of this off, which I will do right now to show you. So you remove the pin out of the top as well as the retaining ring and this pin removes completely out of here. And now that's, this is actually the piece that Badger sells. So you can see it's not a QD like, uh, like this, but it does create a significant weight reduction too. So meaning that system that I just showed you with the QD, uh, I have it written down, it weighs 15.4 ounces and the system that I'm taking apart right now weighs 11.1 .1 ounces. So while it's only 4.3 ounces of difference, that matters when you're counting ounces in events like the Mammoth Sniper Challenge and things like that. Ounces do matter, they, they absolutely do. So the benefit of this too is not only did they create a Picatinny mount with the low profile Harris mount, they created two other versions. So one is an M-lock version. So if your rifle uses a rail that takes an M-lock, they, they make an adapter with that. So as you can see, all you would do is you would slide this unit on here, just like so. You would then put the adapter plate back on, put the little pin in, You have to make sure that the pin is retained here. And you'd screw that down. And then you'd screw on the podlock again. Or what I'm calling the podlock. I'm not sure if that's what this is called. And then the system would work the same way. So now you have that same deal set up for the M lock. And you can see that was a pretty, a pretty quick change out between you know, the M lock adapter and the other adapter for the Picatinny mount. So they've also got one that they make for the Remington rack system. So if you're familiar with that, and that's the kind of rifle system that you're running, uh, rack system sounds, stands for Remington Accessory Chassis System. So if you've got that on the Remington rifle that you're running, they make a plate for that too. So they took pretty much the, the three most common ways that people mount stuff to guns um, and made a mount for that. So they've been able to cut down on the Harris weight and bulk and functionality like this that people knock into barricades with. So that's essentially the system. Um, I'm, you know, the only disadvantage of the system that I can see is now I'm, I'm giving up my quick release uh, to run something like this. But honestly, you know, if I just carry around an Allen wrench with me, it's probably not that big of a deal to just unscrew these and, you know, remove it if I need to. Because there are some matches where you can't run a bipod or something like that. In that case, that would be what you'd have to do is remove it with this. But, you know, for 4.3 ounces of weight savings, I'd rather carry an Allen wrench around. So that's my justification for the system. And I'm very interested to start running this and hopefully uh, get rid of the issues that I've had with this as well as the bulk and weight. So check them out, Badger Ordnance. And then one more thing I forgot to mention is I have a Badger BAR. It's a bipod accessory rail on the, on the bottom of my gun. That's something that Accurate Ordnance installed for me, um, and that was something they recommended as well. But that's how the Picatinny system for the uh, low-profile Harris mount attaches to my gun. So check them out. We'll put the details down below in the description if you're interested in checking out the low-profile Harris mount from Badger Ordnance. All right, the next product I want to take a look at is a new bubble level from Hoptic USA. This is their Picatinny bubble level. So what I'll be doing today when I show you this is that I'll be mounting it to the acronym device from Badger that sits on the front here that, uh, yeah. 
this piece right here, I'm going to mount it to the Picatinny rail that's up here since I'm not running night vision yet. I haven't been able to afford it. Um, this is a location that I think might be a good candidate for the bubble level here. I could also possibly fit it under my scope, but I, I don't think there's enough clearance there. So basically what I, the, the idea here is that I'm mounting it outside here so I can see it when I'm looking you know, down the gun or into the scope and things like that. So currently I run a Vortex bubble level that's attached to the scope. And I think it's a fairly good system, but um, I'm definitely interested in checking out what Hoptic designed with this because it's very, very lightweight. So, you know, my goal with everything now is to shave ounces and I guarantee, I mean, I don't want to take this off, but I guarantee I'm going to save a few ounces going to a bubble level like this, provided it's going to give me the clearance to see it. So something I have to worry about too is that when I'm, you know, opening my scope cap, I have to mount it far enough forward um, so that it'll clear that so it's not in the way of that. So. Um, also, I think mounting it further forward will give me a better view of that too, so I'll be experimenting with that. But I do want to kind of <laughs> give a little shout out to Matt at Hoptic who sent this to Brain Black at ITS, so I thought that was pretty comical. Sometimes I get mail like that uh, addressed to Brain instead of Brian with a Y. That's how I spell my name with a Y. Everybody does not always catch that. But anyway, I also noticed that Hoptic does not have an acronym for this, the Picatinny bubble level, so I'm going to call it the uh, PBL. So, you know, that's, that's free advice. You know, you might want to come up with acronyms. Everybody else has acronyms that make it tough to pronounce, so might as well have one of those too. So, but anyway, the, the Hoptic USA bubble level just fits on the front like this. Comes with a little Allen wrench, and just tighten it down here. And now that's mounted and ready to go. So, I guess my only concern without really getting into this and testing it quite yet is I'm worried about it getting bumped or something like that. But, you know, honestly, it doesn't stick out any more than like a, you know, the, the turrets on a scope or anything like that. But um, this is an area where you're constantly, you know, moving the gun in and out of places, um, coming into barricades, things like that. So it may be the propensity for hitting it might be a little higher than in some locations, but I'm definitely interested to check it out and see how it holds up and everything like that. So if you're interested in this, it does come from Hoptic USA in a, make sure I give the right tan. Well, it doesn't really say, but it comes in like a flat dark earth or a tan as well as a black. So check them out, Hoptic USA. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Today the first question comes from Dan Cook on Crank, sorry, on Facebook, who asks, I've been looking for a solution or the best way to carry and store batteries on my shooting pack besides a Ziploc. Do you have any good ideas or products that would work for 123s, AA's, and AAA's? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, I've been kind of obsessive compulsive with battery storage and carrying batteries for quite a while now. And I keep coming back to these store cells that we carry on the ITS store, both in 123s, AAA's, and AA's. And the reason being is because it's, they're very easy um, to store batteries in. So you can basically click them in and they're, they're, it stores them very nicely. One of the things you have to consider when you're storing batteries or carrying batteries is that they can potentially drain if they touch each other just like a connection would um, you know, in a device. So if that's a consideration you want to take into account, these are great for that because it separates them nicely and doesn't allow them to touch or anything like that. So, but when I'm carrying multiple batteries, which I do, I carry all three flavors of these myself when I'm, when I'm going out because I have things that take every kind of battery. Um, short of trying to reevaluate my kit and condensing my stuff into one battery, which I would love to get to one of these days when people start making things all with one battery. Um, until then, I do have to kind of accommodate different size batteries. So just to show you kind of what I've tried in the past years, um, I have, you know, I started out just putting batteries in a Ziploc or something like that and carrying them like that. 
um, which is not a, a bad idea, but I'm always worried about them um, touching the contacts and draining and things like that. Um, plus long term, I just don't feel like that's a good solution because while you're cutting down on some of the bulk of storage, um, you're also kind of, they're also kind of loose in there, which is, a, which is an issue for me. And plus, you need to store them in something uh, that's, you know, a good waterproof bag, something like a lock sack bag, and I'll get into that in a second too. So, started out doing something like that. Um, Surefire came out with these battery, I don't know what they call these, but it's, this is the SC3, if we're talking about a brand name, but this is their bulb holder that they, bulb and battery holder they came out with a long time ago. Um, and I've had these things since they first came out from Surefire many years ago, probably at least a decade now. But it held a bulb like this for a flashlight in the center of it, and then held four 123s like this. They make a, a larger one that I have in my range box that holds more 123s. But this is just, this is definitely overbuilt. It's, it's a big case for, and it's waterproof too. It's got a gasket on it, which is nice. So you get you know, a waterproof case with the batteries and everything like that. But since Surefires all take 123s, they only make it for 123s. They don't make different, you know, th this can't fit more than a 123. So then I think I, I kind of went to these things. These are called Batuka battery cases, and there's a couple of different places that sell these. But they can basically assemble together um, to create, you know, a storage place for eight different batteries. And they will store... I'm going to check this before I say it, but I was pretty sure, yeah, they, they can store 123s in there just like that. So they have this little spacer in the bottom that, that can fit a 123. But my issue with this is that when you get into, you know, AAA storage in these, they rattle around like crazy. Like even if you were to kind of, you know, kind of put more 123s in here, you're still going to run into rattling issues. Um, and then they fit double A's, of course, like this too. But even those rattle around quite a bit too. What I really like about these store cells is there's no rattling whatsoever in those. I mean, you get a little bit, but it's almost muffled. So in this, it's, it's kind of amplified in these, these battery cases. You know, you can hear that a lot more than you can this. So you get that kind of muffled sound too. And then what I like to do is I like to take all three of those and I'll put them basically like this inside a store cell bag. I'm sorry, it's not a store cell, a lock sack bag like this in my kit. So that's how I carry my batteries. And then I've got, basically I've got six triple A's, four double A's and four 123's all in a waterproof bag. So that's how I like to carry them, and I'd highly recommend if you're going to look into these. Um, we sell the lock sack bags like this too that are the, the right size um, for putting those in just like this. But the new lock sack bags have been upgraded recently, and we're carrying the, the new upgraded ones too. But they have a double seal now at the top, so you can see two different lines that seal up versus the old style that just had one seal. And I'd, I, I think they finally moved on to to a, a better upgrade for these. Uh, my deal with this is that they would sometimes get damaged up here. So you'd have a, a piece of this seal that pulled away from the bag and would ruin it. But um, these, are, these are made to be used multiple times, but after a while, I just replace these things because they will develop little, um, you know, when they, get, when they rub up against other things, they will develop little um, nicks in them that can lead to leaking and things like that too. So after a while, um, you might want to remove those. I've tried these two. These were sent to us uh, for gear tasting quite a while ago too. Uh, these are called battery clips. Um, so these hold, let me find the double A one. So these hold batteries like this too. And I was just never um, happy with, you know, that takes, carries 10 double A's, which is interesting. And this is more like a storage here, not necessarily to take this out onto the, out into your, on your kit out somewhere. It is interesting because you can just kind of pop out the battery like this, but again, these uh, are a little too bulky for me too. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the battery storage options. We'll link the store cells and the lock sack bag size that we have um, in the ITS store down below in the description. If you want to pick up some of those, help support ITS. One last tip on batteries that I just wanted to share real quick is that I have converted to using lithiums in pretty much everything because 
given enough time and opportunity, regular alkaline batteries will deteriorate. They, they lose charge faster. They will uh, muck up if you've ever left them in electronic devices, which I don't recommend anyway. I always take all my batteries out of electronic devices when I'm done using them, um, except maybe my hear, hearing pro. I always leave the batteries in there for some stupid reason. But um, I've switched to lithiums because they last longer. They don't have uh, the potential like alkaline does for leaking and uh, basically contaminating the device that they're in. So just a quick tip. Okay, next question comes from Tika the Husky. It's kind of like Jabba the Hutt, maybe. I don't know. Sounds like a dog name. First question from a dog, so. On Twitter, thoughts on Bluetooth padlocks, uh, particular, particularly Noki, N-O-K-E. So I have not had much experience with Bluetooth padlocks, but I do want to, I can kind of talk to the methodology behind them um, and why, in my opinion, I would avoid those. So we live in a Internet of Things where everything is now connected and everything is now susceptible to hacking and... Um, manipulation through a third party from from the internet so while it's great to have all these interconnected devices meaning that you can log in or send someone an unlock code and unlock your padlock with Bluetooth so they can get into your house or your gate or something like that that can also be manipulated against the device too so not to say that manufacturers aren't necessarily paying attention to that when they build devices like this. We've actually got a whole write-up and article on that kind of philosophy behind the Internet of Things and why they're susceptible to that. Um, but in my opinion, I try to stay away from devices like that as much as I can or put them into a situation where they're not on my home network, per se. So I, if you're going to do something like that, make sure you're you're paying attention to that and and I'm not sure if I'm barking up the wrong tree with Bluetooth padlocks I'm not sure if that's exactly what uh, their intended purpose is is to connect to the internet and allow you to unlock them remotely but if I had to guess that would be the reason that it had Bluetooth I'm not quite sure maybe maybe it's Bluetooth so you can unlock it from a device um, rather than an internet connection but even so Bluetooth is still susceptible to things like that too so um, just something to, to keep in mind. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, um, but I would, I would kind of rely more to the manual. I would side more to the manual uh, process of things. Because um, I'm willing to bet, even though I haven't looked into these, I'm willing to bet that it probably also has a keyway access to the Padlock 2 in addition to the Bluetooth, because there's always probably a manual way to do it, just like a, um, a keypad on a safe, there's, it's always got a key still uh, to access that in the event of the keypad dying or something like that. So I would imagine that's there too, and that makes it even more susceptible you know, to an attack. And if it's already got a key away, might as well just use it as a keyed padlock um, or a, um, a dial, like a multi-dial uh, multi lock like that. So that's my opinion. I would side more with an Abloy padlock. There are there are security padlocks, they've been tested, they, they get tested all the time by the lock sport community and they're some of the best out there that you can get so we'll also link to those below if you're interested. Alright guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. As always, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network if you have questions. We will get them answered here on our Gear Tasting show. If you like what we're doing, please consider joining our crew leader membership linked below also. It will allow us to give you back something in return in exchange for supporting the show. Thanks for watching.